podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. No breaks, no breaks, no fear, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along to another episode of No Breaks, No Fear. And in this week's episode, reaction to some of those meetings taking place on Bank Holiday Monday as the Oxford Spires continue their 100% record. We're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We're not taking it for granted, far from it. You know, but while things are going well, you might as well take a bit of credit and just go along with it. We'll hear more from Peter Schrock and also Rowan Tungate of the Oxford Spires as well in our Bank Holiday Monday review. We'll also hear from Emil Saifutinov, who had a bit of a dodgy start to the meeting, ended up with 11 and says he's still learning. Yeah, so I'm learning a little bit more today. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy, you know, it's, uh, we got good points, you know, it's, uh, and, uh, yeah, looking forward for first day, you know. Our main guest this week is Dan Thompson, who himself had an impressive performance for Ipswich, banging away the points at his old stomping ground. Uh, it is always nice to get go back and race there but obviously uh, I'm for a different club now so uh, I have to do a job regardless The season at championship level now underway as well, we're here from Zach Cook of the Pool Pirates. A lot of things are going to change during the season but um, yeah it's definitely a good start for us. And from Louis Kerr at the Berwick Bandits who've won their first bit of silverware this season. Yeah it was good to get um, yeah, the Borders Trophy bit bit of silverware to start the season so that was nice a more exclusive insight into the showbiz lives of British Speedway's top stars Mike Boswell this week meets Ben Basso last film you watched uh Dumb and Dumber all this and much more to come in this week's episode of British Speedway's official podcast no breaks no fear the official British Speedway podcast So we'll start off by looking back at a busy programme on Easter Bank Holiday Monday and Oxford's dream start to life in the Rowe Motor Oil Premiership continued with a 48-42 win at the Birmingham Brummies. The Spires secured the match and the aggregate points as well and they sit on top of the early table with a 100% record from their opening three fixtures. They overcame the absence of number one as well, Matt Sejanowski, who was riding in the Polish Golden Helmet and produced a strong all-round showing at Perry Bar. Australian champion Rowan Tungate enjoying his best display so far with 14 plus 1 from 6 rides. Charles Wright bagged 11 plus 2 and Chris Harris 10 plus 1. All of those then in double figures. The Brummies scoring was dominated once again by Scott Nichols in his final appearance of his short-term stint. He racked up 15 plus 1 at reserve. Tom Brennan totaled 13 plus 1 including wins in the last two races. We'll hear from top scorer for the Spires, Rowan Tungate, in a moment. First of all, a very happy Peter Schrock. Well, Peter, even more so with the fact you were without your number one in match A, Janowski, tonight. Just how pleased are you with that result here at Birmingham? Very pleased, you know, because obviously, you know, uh, we did, we have been questioned not bringing another rider, but I've mentioned to you before that I was quite happy going with RR and, you know, worked it out at home, you know, in my head how I do things and one thing and that and, and the RR worked out exactly the way I wanted it to work out we scored 8 paid whatever it was which that's what we sort of expect of somebody like Magic this time of the year to get going so uh, you know all the boys really got stuck in and um, you know and yeah, so uh, really really chuffed yeah, like uh, Rowan Tungate said in another interview uh, as well, it was a, a full team effort and when you are a man down it, it requires everyone to play their part yeah you know even in one of the reserve races, you know, Ashton and and, uh, and Leon, you know, they were at it. And, and Ashton, you know, when you think how long he's been riding and he didn't give up and he kept going and picked up a point, you know, that to me that's as much as Rowan scoring 15, you know. It, it's it's great, great effort. The, you know, the, the, the boys are really gelled together. You know, they believe in what we're doing in, in Oxford is always important, you know, and we're just, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing. We're not taking it for granted, far from it. You know, but while things are going well, you might as well take a bit of credit and just go along with it. You've mentioned Rowan there as well. Obviously, uh, 14 paid 15 here tonight. When you have been away from British Speedway or away from any league, it can take you a bit of time to settle in, but that, that's certainly a, a, an encouraging sign. Yeah, I mean, last time Rowan was here in 2013 when uh, Poole won the league. So, uh, you know, but he's, listen, he's a quality rider. That's why he's one of the top riders in the Polish league. You know, so it... it with, with riders like that, my experience is it's, it's making them making them believe in themselves, and and build a happy environment around them, and you get the best out of them, and that's what Rowan, you know, he really enjoys what we're doing. So uh, you know, and hopefully, you know, it's going to be on a long-term basis that he's going to be with Oxford. 
It might only be a start as well, but this this has been quite some start to life in the top league for Oxford. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know, it's it's uh, it's 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 a tough league, you know, sort of thing. I mean, you had some great races here over the last couple of meetings with with uh, Sheffield coming here, and you know, and and um, so for us to win tonight was an important win. You know, it uh, it puts us on the map, and it makes people sort of you know sort of maybe respect us a little bit sort of thing so we're just going to carry on enjoy the moment and uh, but not taking it for granted at the same time Peter Schrock with Ryan Guest well Ryan also spoke to top scorer and a man having his best night so far in Oxford Colours uh, Rowan Tungate the current Australian champion speaking after that victory over the Birmingham Brummies well Rowan Tungate it's been a, another glorious night for the Oxford Spires just how proud are you of the team after that one yeah it was a good win for us and um, yeah, we've had two wins so far, so we, we took it, try to take advantage of it, and all the boys put in a good effort and um, done what they had to do. So um, yeah, it's another good team effort, and, and we can be proud of ourselves. It needed that team effort as well, because obviously running ride replacement for, for Masha Yanovsky at number one as well. A lot of people were, were expecting Oxford to maybe have a, a difficult night, but but everyone really pulled together, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's early days and we could have done with, with Magic. Um, he was he was in uh, Poland doing his duties, but yeah, we, we got by and, and, and picked up the win again. So, um, yeah, massive team effort and uh, yeah, everyone can be proud of themselves. Like you say, it's early days, but for a, a club to come into the, the top flight of British Speedway and do what the Spires have done in those opening three meetings, it can't be not can it? Yeah, exactly. We're just going to take race by race and not to get too far ahead of ourselves and, and just... Yeah, just take one one meeting at a time, and at the end of the day, it's the playoffs that are most important. So a few of us are going to find our feet, especially me, and Magic, and mainly me and Magic. We haven't raced in, in England for four years, so with engines and stuff, we need to find a bit of more of a setup. And um, but yeah, once we once we get that sorted out, we we should be a pretty dangerous team. I was going to ask you about yourself as well, like you say, back in British Speedway. Uh, 14 plus 1 here at Birmingham. How, how would you assess it overall and how are you finding it being back? Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I feel good today. I, would, I made some good starts and there's still some things I need to improve on and one thing is starts. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm consistent enough from the starts and uh, I need to find a, another engine for different tracks that are more slick and um, yeah, I'm just, like I said, finding my feet and trying to get a better setup every time. Well, Rowan, it's good to see you back. Well done to you in the Spires. Thank you. Rowan Tungate talking to Ryan Guest there and the Oxford Spires continuing their perfect start to life in the Row Motor Oil Premiership. What about the Birmingham Brummies, though? They're still searching for their first win of the season. Let's get the reaction of Sam Malenko, the team manager, with Ryan Guest. Well, Sam Malenko, it's uh, another defeat. Just how disappointed are you after that one tonight? I'm disappointed, but I think my uh, seven riders are equally as disappointed, you know. And there's, um, you know, it got away from us. Um, I can, it's easy to look back right now and see how it did. Um, but, you know, I tried to explain it to the guys, you know, keep your heads up, think about it, and um, see what we can do next. Yeah, like you say, you have to juggle the riding order a bit to, to facilitate Scotty down at reserve tonight as well. Certain things work, for example, Tom Brennan had a, a brilliant night for one or two of the other boys. It, they struggled, had a tough night at the office. Yeah, you know, when you got, um, when you rely on a, a team to come together on a night, when they're relying on their team, mechanically wise, to do their jobs, some things kind of get overlooked a little bit, and I think... Uh, you know, we can see that uh, one of our foreign riders, I don't want to mention any names, had some difficulties getting his bike working for himself. And we found it eventually what the problem was. So, you know, when your guys are losing big points at the beginning, you know, what what's different from last week? You know, we we're making, making starts this week. We weren't. They were. Um, Oxford's... I think I kind of understand, you know, the size of the tracks that we got. Very similar. And Oxford probably had a little bit closer setups than the likes of like Sheffield. Yeah, uh, got to look forward. There's a, a chance to put things right on Thursday night at Kings Lynn. A massive boost for the, the Brummies as well with the news that Piotr Pavlic is coming into the side. Yeah, we, you know, we want to give our big thanks to Scotty Nichols for helping us out. And now that we got Pietro on the team, you know, I'm really looking forward to working with him. And I'm sure that, you know, he might be the ingredients of, uh, with um, his fellow Polish man of uh, Victor, hopefully uh, spicing things up a little bit. 
and the way it's worked out, we got them in uh, riding together in the first race. Yeah, and uh, Kings Lynn on Thursday, how would you assess that? Because obviously they haven't had a home meeting yet. Well, what I assess is that, um, you know, we don't go there anticipate that we're going to take the points away from them. We're just going to go there and do our job and see how it works. It will be interesting to see how Piotr Pawlicki goes. He's had a couple of strong performances in his first two fixtures in Poland. And they'll be uh, hoping, well, certainly Sam Malenko will be hoping he's bringing that form with him to the UK starting on Thursday. Let's hear from one of the top scorers for the Brummies on the night then. The top scorer was Scott Nichols, 15 plus one for him, riding at reserve. Tom Brennan totaled 13 plus one and finished off with back-to-back wins in his final two races. Well, Tom, after some encouraging signs against the likes of the reigning champion Sheffield and last year's grand finalist Ipswich, just how disappointed are the team after that one? Yeah, very much. Um, unfortunately, you know, we couldn't uh, we couldn't come up with it today. Um, we sort of held in there very, very strongly. I, I kind of thought at the start of the meeting. Um, unfortunately, that's obviously where it goes. And, um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, also the better teams might. Obviously, you've been in in and around British Speedway and the Premiership for a, a long time. But with the likes of Vaxlav, who, who's been away for a while, it's obviously Victor's first year. You, you can see where they're perhaps finding it tougher than yours. Yeah, it's tough, you know. Milik has been out of the out of, the, out of British League for quite a long time, um, and obviously Lampard is absolutely brand new to this league. Um, trust me, those guys will become very good. Um, they are they are like um, 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 world class riders, so they know what they're doing. Um, it's just we just need to get going, you know. We're, we're kind of fortunate that we've had all these meetings in quite a short amount of time because this will progress us progress us more. Um, and obviously Scott, I mean now know how public he backed that. That also shakes up the team too. So. You know, Scott has done an absolutely fantastic job, and you know, I think it's. Uh, I, think, I think I think we've all learned a lot from him. You mentioned that quick run of fixtures that are coming as well to kind of blow, blow away these these cobwebs and anything else, and it is a, a quick return to Kings Lynn on Thursday as well. How important is it to, to maintain that belief? Yeah, we really need to maintain that belief. You know, we, we, we've come so close every single time, and obviously tonight was a little bit a little bit of a disappointment because we've been working very well as a team. Um, and everybody in the pits are working very good. It just We just need that extra little set, and uh, we're about 70% there right now. Very so uh, as soon as we can all fire on all cylinders, um, we'll be a very much different Birmingham, that's for sure. For yourself individually, 13 paid 14 tonight, so uh, plenty of race wins amongst that, as, as you would suggest. How, how, have you, how do you assess life that started with Birmingham? Yeah, well, I finally, uh, finally come good in the end, which is obviously important. Uh, my teammates have been fantastic to me. Um, I mean, my um, my mechanic Kyle and uh, and uh, Craig worked worked very hard in the pits. We actually had a few kind of bike changes there, and uh, I have I have a complete trust in them. So uh, no, very very thankful for the team I have around me. And uh, Birmingham has been a fantastic team to ride for. I'm absolutely loving every minute I'm here. I just hope we can get some wins under our belt soon because uh, because of this um, this uh, team, this uh, this uh, management deserves deserves a lot more. Well, there were a couple of other fixtures on Easter Monday and they were in the Premiership Knockout Cup and the holders Ipswich remain in a strong position to progress to the semi-finals after winning 48-42 at Leicester on Easter Monday. The Witches recovered from conceding a 5-1 in the first race and hit back immediately. Rising star Dan Thompson instrumental on his old home track. He was unbeaten in his first three rides in what was a tight contest for most of the evening. Emil Saifudinov and Jason Doyle extending the first leg advantage getting it together and winning big in heat 15 with a 5-1 Doyle got 11 plus 1 Emil got 11 and they led the scoring along with Dan Thompson adding a vital 9 plus 1 Sam Masters and Richard Lawson were the best for the Lions with 10 plus 1 and 9 plus 2 respectively we'll hear from uh, Sam Masters in a moment first of all though let's hear the thoughts of Emil Saifudinov who ended with 11 which is pretty impressive when you consider he finished third in his first two rides and then really found some form. He's been chatting to Alex Raby. Emil Saifedino, very tough start to the meeting for you, but you came alive at the end and really brought it home for Ipswich with a six-point victory and a, a fine finish in the last heat decider as well. Uh, you know, it's like important like uh, how we uh, end the meeting, so it's, uh, I'm really happy you now it's uh, about the last uh, three hits. We, we changed the bike and uh, it's working mu- much better and I can play you know, with the uh, with bike. So uh, first few hits, you know, it has... Uh, some problems, uh, which one you know is still you know is testing some uh, stuff you know from uh, beginning of season you know and uh, yeah so I'm learning a little bit more today so uh, yeah I'm really happy you know is uh, we we got good points you know is uh, and uh, yeah looking forward for first day you know is uh, 
Talking about strong riders, uh, as we've said, last heat decider. When it comes down to a big race like that one, yourself and Jason, that's the uh, ideal combination. I think you enjoyed yourselves out there in that heat 15 to, to bring home the six-point win. Yeah, for sure, you know, it's just, uh, hit 15, it was like uh, more enjoying because we can uh, uh, go like with the pairs and I uh, can see, you know, it's, uh, how J Jason going and then I can wait and uh, uh, because uh, I has good opportunity because my bike is uh, pulling so good and uh, yeah, so that, uh, that like I said, you know, it's uh, when his bike is going, I can play with the, with the bike, you know, it's good, uh, good hit. So it's, yeah, so we hope, you know, it's, I can keep that, you know, it's, uh, uh, all the time and uh, have a score more points. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, certainly got going in the end. Back-to-back -back wins in his final three rides for Emil Saifutinov and helping see Ipswich build a little bit of a lead into the second leg of the clash between uh, Ipswich and Leicester in the knockout cup. Let's hear from top scorer for the Leicester Lions. Then Sam Masters got 10 plus one. Also talking to Alex Raby. Sam Masters, uh, top performer tonight for the Leicester Lions, but uh, unfortunately for the home side, a, a six-point defeat. And I'm sure there'll be uh, discussions afterwards, but it just in go to plan tonight did it you know we versed a really tough team and uh yeah disappointing that we lost by six but uh you know when Hemel and Doyle are on it like that they're hard to beat and especially going into like heats 13 and 15 they're always going to be strong so um you, you kind of need to get a lead on them early I think and uh yeah we didn't have that tonight unfortunately but we we're battling away we still got a couple of uh little issues with, with Riders' bikes and stuff in our team. I've, I'm hopefully I've sorted mine. Yeah, I finished with a duck tonight, but um, other than that, I can't complain. Yeah, much more like it for you, I think, uh, than the the Kings Lynn meeting. You were making some nice starts, looked to have some better speed, I would suggest. Uh, maybe your your first ride, you were a little bit down on power, but from then on, looked really good. Three race victories, and I think you'll be satisfied to to a greater extent today, certainly. Yeah, I had a real rough match, especially at pool on. On Friday, and uh, yeah, I was thinking, I'm, I'm, hopefully this ain't me. And then yesterday in Poland, scored pretty good, so I come back and uh, sorted a few things, changed a lot of things on my bike, and seemed to have worked. So uh, we can build on that now, and uh, you know I've got a, a couple of race wins under my belt, and I can um, build on it. Defeat tonight, but we are only halfway through. Uh, there's still uh, more business to be done at Ipswich, and I think the witches, even their management, are a little bit cautious, knowing that there's some riders who go well around Foxhall Heath uh, within this Leicester side. Yeah, that's it. It's not. Uh, it's not over for sure. And uh, you know, I've seen weirder things happen in Speedway than winning away. But you know, they've done it to us here tonight. No reason why we can't do it to them. And like you said, we've got some guys that don't mind going around Ipswich, and uh, we're going to give it our all. Well done tonight. Thanks for speaking to us. Cheers, mate. Yeah, so it's all back to Foxhall on Thursday for part two of that with uh, Ipswich starting at an advantage, but you never know in Speedway. We'll find out on Thursday if Ipswich can continue their defence of the Knockout Cup. Well, there was one other fixture in the Premiership Knockout Cup earlier on in the day. It was a lunchtime start at the National Speedway Stadium as Bellevue established an eight-point lead over Sheffield on Easter Monday to leave their Knockout Cup tie finally poised ahead of the second leg at Ollerton Stadium. The Aces won 49-41 on Monday with their second strings and reserves coming to the fore. Ty Wuffenden shone for the Tigers. Uh, the former world champion won four races and finished with 13 plus one as his team had to battle to remain in touch. Even with the Aces top two of Brady Kurtz and Dan Bewley not recording their usual high scores. For the Aces, Jamin Lindsay collected 10 points, Norik Bladorn nine, winning three races, whilst reserves Connor Mountain and Connor Bailey outscored their counterparts 12 to 2. Let's hear it from Ty Wuffenden now then speaking to Ryan Guest. Well Ty Wuffenden it was a, a tricky afternoon out there. How did you find conditions? Uh, yeah it was good. I made a few good starts and, and just yeah, led them races and then uh, heat 13 I made a really bad start from gate 3 after a bit of rain it was it was quite wet all the way to the corner and um, yeah just uh, was behind Jack and BK they were battling it out taking up the majority of the track and I had one crack at it on the last lap, second last corner. Uh, had much more pace than him, just yeah, I was in, they was in the right spots and I just yeah, didn't know where to go. So uh, all in all, it was a good, good night, but um, as far as the team's concerned, we've got a bit of work to do. I was going to say, from the team point of view, it was a, a better start than in the first two meetings for, for Sheffield. Um, an eight-point deficit going into Thursday night at Olerton, how do you assess it? Oh, you know, obviously we've got an eight-point lead and, and we're capable of doing that, so... 
Um, yeah, like I said, just going to get a bit more dialed in, and um, you know, it's only early in the season. This is what our third home match. Um, you know, Bellevue, Bellevue are strong. Like, there's a lot of strong teams, but. I believe over two legs, uh, we're the better one, so we'll see how we go on Thursday. After a, a postponement last week and obviously Carl's meeting being called off, how, how much are the boys itching to, to get back out on home shale? Oh yeah, everyone, is, I guess it doesn't matter if we're at home or away, we just enjoy riding their bikes, right? And from yourself, obviously starting at a British Speedway season once again, just how impressed and how happy are, are you with the start you've made? Yeah, you know, it's going good, I uh, can't complain. Um, to race at Oxford, you know, Kind of took me back a few years. The first time I raced there was 2000, or well, the last time I raced there was 2007. So uh, it was nice to go back there, see what they've done with the place, and and, and you know it's got a nice little buzz around it. Uh, and then to go back to and then to go to Birmingham uh, after that was 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 cool, good fun, beautiful track, smooth. Um, that's the main thing, you know. Everyone wants to ride a nice smooth track that's uh, you know where we can race really hard and, and not get into any trouble. So. Um, what more can you ask for, really? Great to have you back. Well done today. Thank you. Cy Woffenden enjoying life back in British Speedway. And uh, the Sheffield Tigers continue their clash against Bellevue on Thursday, 7.30 at Ollerton Stadium for the second leg of that quarterfinal. Ipswich versus Leicester also uh, at the same time. Whoever is victorious from uh, those ties will pick up the action in the Knockout Cup in June when uh, Leicester or Ipswich will face Birmingham Brummies and the winner of Sheffield and Bellevue will face the Kingsland Stars in the semi-final of the Premiership Knockout Cup and uh, that's due to take place at the start of June. That brings you up to date with everything that's happened on Bank Holiday Monday. Just looking ahead to the uh, other fixtures in the Row Motor Oil Premiership um, on Thursday, there is uh, just the one fixture in the Premiership itself, and that's Kings Lynn versus Birmingham Brummies. That we uh, <clears throat> and that's Kings Lynn versus Birmingham Brummies as uh, the Stars look to race their first home fixture of 2024. And then uh, scooting over to the start of next week, Monday, just the one fixture in the Row Motor Oil Premiership. And it's live on BSN as well. The Bellevue Aces versus the Leicester Lions. 7.30 the start time at the National Speedway Stadium. In the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, we will shine a light on one of the stars of the Ipswich Witches from uh, their performance at Leicester. Dan Thompson uh, put in a uh, huge shift as uh, he helped the Ipswich Witches get that a slender lead, albeit, but a lead nonetheless to take into their second leg. And he's had a couple of good performances of late as well. And uh, Dan Thompson, rising star for the Ipswich Witches, speak to us next on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear, the official British Speedway podcast. Still to come, we will turn the attention a little bit later on the Cab Direct Championship, which is starting to get underway now. A few fixtures already over the last uh, few days, over the Easter weekend, but really now we're into April. Things are coming thick and fast there. We'll hear from Zach Cook of the Pool Pirates and Louis Kerr in uh, Berwick Bandits colours this year uh, a little later on. But right now, we are talking to someone who's actually involved at championship level, but uh, hasn't ridden there just yet, but has firmly been involved in the action for the Ipswich Witches as their rising star. Dan Thompson has had a good start to the season for the Ipswich Witches. 6 plus 1 against Bellevue, 7 plus 3 against Birmingham and 9 plus 1 against Leicester of course riding on a track that he knows very well, a track he pretty much grew up around. I'm sure we'll hear about that shortly but uh, he joins us now for a chat about the season so far and uh, Dan you have to say you've got to be pretty happy so far so good and a, a good score around uh, around your old place there at Leicester. Yeah, no, it's been a great start to the year for myself. Um, really enjoying my race and, and just sort of not putting any pressure on myself, just trying to score every time I go out. And uh, yeah, obviously I'm with Ipswich this year, but I stu- still still do enjoy a visit to Leicester. Uh, still know know my way around there pretty well. So uh, yeah, it was nice to put in another big shift for Ipswich. And uh, yeah, we've won all our meetings so far, so looking to carry that on. For people who are not familiar with your story, you and your brother pretty much grew up around Leicester, so perhaps it's no surprise you went particularly well uh, around there this time and also last season as well. But just for those who aren't aware of the backstory, just to explain why why Leicester is such a favourite of yours. 
Yeah, obviously, I've just been riding it since uh, such a young age. Just started mascot in there when I was about eight, and then national league at fifteen and championship at sixteen, seventeen. Obviously, I did a short stint with them in the Premiership um, before that came to an end. But I still enjoy the track there. I still uh, love all the people there. It's um, uh, it is always nice to go back and race there. But obviously. Uh, I'm for a different club now, so uh, I have to do a job regardless. Um, but no, it's uh, it's nice to have an away track now that I know I can go and uh, score well at. And uh, um, I've sort of made Ipswich uh, a bit better for myself as well now. So uh, yeah, the Premiership tracks are becoming better for myself. They say about beating your opposite number uh, in Speedway, but your opposite number in this particular fixture between... Ipswich and Leicester is your brother, of course, Joe Thompson, who is the rising star at Leicester and must be ever so slightly bizarre being at Leicester and, and being in opposing pits. Yeah, it, it obviously is strange to race uh, each other, but um, I'm sure it's the same for like the Warrells and the Cook brothers. Um, but uh, we're racing for our clubs. We've got a job to do. Um, so we have to race like we're uh, any other rider. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't really help each other during the meeting, just go out and do our thing and then uh, talk about it on the way home. Just, uh, yeah, I think it was 3-0 to me yesterday, so I'm sure I want to get one back on me on Thursday. Yeah, well, this is it. You uh, you rematch again very soon indeed. And um, there is a, you know, this, this connection between yourselves and uh, Leicester, of course, Joe, started with Ipswich last season. You were at Leicester. The two of you have now sort of swapped over in 2024, as, as uh, fate would have it. Um, but your, you know, your biggest scores in the Premiership um, have come recently, riding with Ipswich rather than when you were riding for Leicester. So do you think that the time you spent with Ipswich then and, and the way that fate worked out has, has made you, a, I don't know, a more rounded rider? You, you've picked stuff up riding with the likes of uh, Doyle and Saifutnov and so on? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh- can't hide from the fact that um, me being dropped from Leicester was probably um, a good thing for myself. Uh, probably at the time I didn't realise it. I was a bit angry at the decision and stuff. But since joining Ipswich, it's a, it's a really difficult track if you don't have any experience there. So um, me learning that week in, week out has sort of given me uh, different knowledge and experience to take to other places that I perhaps didn't have before. Um so, yeah, definitely. I think the move to Ups, which has improved me as a rider, and usually I start pretty slow in the season. It takes a while to get going, but um, this year I'm on some new equipment and it seems to be really working for me. So, uh, putting some big scores and just uh, looking to maintain that and just be consistent. We talked about your time at Leicester previously, uh, but you, you mentioned there about actually maybe it turned into be a good thing. You know that 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 getting dropped is 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 taking you on now as a as a rider um, with with your experiences that you've had since. Was there a choice to make uh, as to where to ride in in twenty twenty four? And the reason I ask is obviously one of, one or two Leicester fans are looking now and and seeing how you're riding and thinking maybe they should have given you a bit more of a chance. You should have had a bit longer and perhaps they're a bit hasty. And what your thoughts really on that? Yeah, you know. Um... Drew came in last year for them and uh, he did a better job than I was doing at the time. So um, the change worked for Leicester and the change also worked for myself moving to Ipswich. Um, but uh, sort of at the coming towards the end of the season, uh, Richie rang me and said, am I interested in coming back um, if they're keeping the rising star position in the teams? Um, and I said, yeah, 100%. It's... Um, it was a club I definitely wanted to be at this year and sort of continue my progression with them. Um, I was happy with how last year went, the second half of it, and uh, I couldn't be happier with the way that, that things are going uh, there at the start of this year. And what are your personal aims this year? Because obviously having a good season with Ipswich goes without saying, everybody wants that, and you know, you're uh, keeping the pressure on Leicester here because you're the reigning champions of, of the Knockout Cup. You want to retain this title, and, and you've made a good bit of headway in that. But for you personally, you've dropped out of the you know you're the under nineteen champion, but you can't defend that because you've you've progressed out of those ranks now. So what is it the under twenty ones? Is that something you're aiming at? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I missed out on the uh, under twenty ones by uh, a lap last year. I was leading it for three laps and uh, just didn't quite have the legs to uh, bring it home. But 
Still got two more chances at that one, so um, I definitely want to try and get that title under my belt this year. Um, and there's some other under-21 events um, abroad that I'm looking at, um, aiming for those. So, uh, yeah, see how it goes. And if I continue this form, then hopefully I'll be recognised for it. Looking at um, Ipswich overall, maybe uncharacteristically, for the first time we've seen uh, Emil having to, to dig deep uh, into his toolbox, really. He had a, a couple of spills, which is uncharacteristic for him at Foxall last week, so much so he's, um, his race suit has had to go off to get fixed because he burnt some holes in it when he burnt... Um, I think it was the exhaust, wasn't it, that burnt through? Um, and... Even at Leicester, he, you know, he smashed the track record, I think, the last time he rode there in his very, very first heat. Uh, but this time, you know, he's, he's said himself, he's, he's learnt a lot from that um, meeting. So, you know, when, when riders like that are still figuring stuff out, that must show to you as well that it's all right to, you know, work things out as a meeting goes on and, and use it as a learning experience as well if it doesn't go well. Yeah, you know, obviously we're all, we're all human. We're all allowed a slow start to meetings. It's... Um... Uh, it's just how he bounced back from them. Obviously, Emil figured it out pretty quickly last night after his first two, uh, going unbeaten for the rest of it. But you, you know the capabilities of him. He's not going to have a bad night all night. Um, but for me, sort of my aim this year is to just try and uh, score at least a point every time I go out and ride. Um, so as a, as a rising star, obviously, sort of, we don't have an average our jobs to just pick up points here and there. So... Uh, if you pick up a point every ride, that's more than job done. So, uh, um, but the learning side of it this year already has been amazing. So I can come in and bounce off the other riders about ideas, what to do with bike setups and that, and they're all they're all there for me. Um, and it's a really positive start. And you, you were the third top scorer uh, at Leicester there, behind uh, Emil and Jason. And we said Emil had a slow start, he still finished with 11 points, as you said. Um, Jason Doyle also 11 plus one, you got nine plus one. So a solid uh, showing there. Jordan Jenkins is another new signing. Of course, he was with um, Peterborough. Obviously, they're not here now, so he had to find somewhere new. But another rider who came into the ranks at Ipswich through the course of last season to fill some gaps that they had here and there. Um, and you, again, I think you've you've said in the Speedway Star that you feel that once Jordan gets going and, and maybe he's sort of finding his way around things a little bit early doors, that when you really start to click, you're going to have a formidable reserve partnership. Yeah, I, I obviously get on really well with Jordan. He's a, a quality rider. He's just obviously he's been dealt a tough card because he's uh, gone straight into the main body of the team. Um Obviously, that's hard on any young rider. I do believe there should be some kind of um, ruling that you should be allowed, if, whether it's two or three seasons as a rising star, regardless of your average, um, something like that. Because um, I believe he only did like one year and now he's out. Um, but yeah, it's obviously it's a lot harder for him being in the main body of the team. Um, but speaking to him at Leicester last night, he was uh, happy with how things went and uh, feels like he's turned the corner. So, uh, yeah, uh, once we're all firing, I mean, we're already putting the results on the board, so it's only going to get better. Yeah, and, and it's a good point you make. Keenan Rue, you've been riding with so far, but you really you'd expect once the averages even out for, for Keenan to make his way back into the main body of the team and, and Jordan to to come down into the reserve berths at number six? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, Keenan's had a lot of uh, time in the main body of the team last year and started this year. He's more than capable of holding his own uh, in the main body. Uh, so is Jordan, but he's obviously um, time at reserve is uh, a lot more helpful for a young rider. Um, like my race is uh, considerably easier than than his, even when he was at number six. So, um yeah, points are hard to come by because every time you're out, you're against um, well-established riders. So, uh, yeah, I mean, even the way we're lining up now, we're uh, strong. So um, it's just going to get better. Ipswich, the defending champions in the Knockout Cup, of course, and obviously looking to retain that. And you start off at an advantage. You've got six-point lead over Leicester for the second leg on uh, on Thursday. So that takes a little bit of the pressure off, doesn't it? Yeah, that's that's sort of what we were aiming for to get um, sort of any lead going into our home leg because we know what we can do at home. Um, 
But yeah, it does take a bit of pressure off, but we can't be um, complacent and sort of think we've already got through. Um, we've still got to do the job on Thursday and uh, hopefully then we can progress through and uh, try and retain the Knockout Cup trophy. Just to talk about the championship for a little bit, you're lining up with the Plymouth Gladiators there um, and so far you're yet to ride a meeting for them because the first couple of home fixtures have been called off because of wet weather and it has been extremely wet in Devon. I think you can look it up online. It's been the uh, the wettest February and March, I think, that pretty much has ever been. Um, and that's obviously not good when you're trying to renovate the track as well because they're making some track changes there to, uh, to try and make it a little bit, uh, maybe a bit quicker i think and a bit more space on that third and fourth bend yeah obviously the the track changes they've tried to make it be impossible with the weather they've had um we had a press day there the other week and uh, you can just see how the water's made the surface so um sort of spongy um but no they've worked really hard over the winter and um it's great that the club's got ambitions to make things better um the race is obviously really tight there so uh Hopefully it should just allow a bit better pass and, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we get going in the next few weeks. Well, you hopefully should be in business uh, sooner rather than later. The, uh, the 13th is set for the first home fixture as it stands versus Scunthorpe, the second leg of the first round of the Knockout Cup, the night after racing Scunthorpe at the Eddie Wright Raceway. Um, but prior to that, we will see Plymouth in action uh, in the BSN series as you head to the reigning champions, the Pool Pirates, which is going to be next Wednesday, the 10th of April. Uh, always a tricky place to go and quite a baptism of fire for your new side. Yeah, no, there's probably not a tougher place you can go for the opening fixture. Obviously, uh, they did a really good job on uh, Oxford the other night. Um, so uh, we'll all have to be on our A game going there. Um, but yeah, we'll all be giving it our all. We're sort of a, a levelled out team across the board. We don't really have any uh, big heat leaders as such, but we, um, we're all capable throughout. So uh, hopefully we can keep things close so we can... Um, uh, try and get the uh, return leg at Plymouth. I guess you have some uh, pool experience in in Carl Newman as well, so perhaps that will uh, will help out on the trip to Wimborne Road. As far as Nico Cavati is concerned, have you heard any further updates on on how he's doing? And uh, of course, you have now got this facility to be able to replace him at number one because the search for a replacement has obviously been very tricky at this stage of the season to find someone who is available, especially racing on weekends and, and so on as well. So there is that, but I uh, just wondered, if, is there any update on, on Nico's situation? Um, not really. We haven't really heard too much about um, Nico. Obviously, we all wish him well, though, uh, for his recovery and hopefully he can join us at some point. Um I know they were looking at other options um, because we weren't originally granted a facility. Um, so, yeah, just lucky we've got that facility whilst we figure out um, how long Nico's going to be uh, away from the team. So, uh, yeah, just hopefully we can get a good guest in for the first one and uh, try and put a good result on. And is there any word on, on being able to get on the track at Plymouth to, to have a practice? Because you want to get some laps under your belt, I imagine, before you do line up against Scunthorpe there so hopefully in the next couple of weeks uh, you, you'll hopefully be able to get on there and, and, and learn the new circuit no, I'm not sure We've, none of us have ever ridden Plymouth yet I know we're trying to organise a practice day whenever um, it's ready but they keep getting dealt the bad weather so uh, until that stops um, I'm not sure what meetings will go on yeah, hopefully the weather sorts itself out and uh, we can get down to Plymouth and uh, get the first meeting and, and yeah, just looking to win that one. It's a good job you like driving on the M5, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of driving. I probably signed for uh, two of the farthest clubs this year that I could have signed for. But um, if a if a club treats you right and everything's right there, you like everything there, you'll travel as far as it takes, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. And and through the course of the winter, you mentioned you you've got some you know different equipment and and so what's that? Is that upgraded engines or what, what sort of changes have you been making in the background that you think is going to take you up and uh, up a notch this year? Yeah, I've uh, had a, a new engine um, and I've uh, changed a few minor things on the bike, um, such as clutches and stuff. Just just little things to try and help myself. Um, it's a few where you've got to sort of find what works for you. It's not as easy as having like a, 
a book that tells you how to do everything. It's uh, very much personal. You've got to figure things out for yourself. Um, uh, obviously, you take advice from other riders, but some stuff works for them that won't work for, for you. So, uh, yeah, just little tweaks that I think will help me, and uh, so far they have done. And now you're getting, you know, spend time with the likes of Saifutinov and Doyle, you know, two riders that have been, you know, right on the top table of, of, of World Speedway. Are you a bit of a, a Speedway anorak and you're looking at what they've got on their machines and seeing what you can employ into your own gear as well now? Yeah, exactly. Obviously, whenever you walk through a pits, I think most riders will look at each other's bikes, see uh, what's different to yours, what's potentially better or uh, how something's different, just... Obviously, yeah, every rider's always looking to better themselves. Um, I know even Emil's made a few changes this year, although last year he was almost flawless. Uh, so even he's one of the best riders in the world and still looking for better. So, uh, yeah, there's always things you can do to, to better yourself and the bikes is a big part of it. So uh, looking at other people's machinery can give you a few ideas. Are you sticking with the chains? Because I noticed that um, Jason Doyle's gone on to belt drives, doesn't he now? which has been the big big sort of talking point. Yeah, um, belt drives have sort of been around a few years now, I think. There's, uh, as chains are still the more uh, way more popular option at the minute. Um, uh, I've heard of a few problems with the, with the belt drive, so uh, I just stick with the chain at the minute. Okay, well, we'll look forward to seeing in action very soon, Dan, and certainly people who are subscribers to BSN don't have to wait very long because they will see you riding for the Plymouth Gladiators in Plymouth's first fixture of 2024 away at Pool at Wimborne Road. That's um, next Wednesday, and then the following week, the Thursday, we'll be uh, with BSN at Ipswich at Foxhall because it's going to be um, Ipswich versus Oxford. So that's on BSN as well. So the Dan Thompson fans are... Uh, are getting a double whammy over uh, over eight days. Yeah, definitely. I do. I do really enjoy the uh, BSN coverage. I know a lot of riders use it as a, a tool to uh, rewatch their races, see what they can do different, or uh, a lot of us like watch the meeting that had been there the week before if it was on BSN or something to uh, gauge what the gate the gates are doing and sort of how the tracks ride. And so uh, it does help a lot of riders as well. We always think of it, you know, broadcasting straight to fans, I suppose, and supporters and, and what have you. You don't, you don't really think that um, when you, well, certainly when you're broadcasting it, that riders are going to be looking at this for uh, for technical tips. But maybe we should start uh, putting those in there as well. You certainly see riders looking at their phones in the pits every now and again, and as soon as they come back in, and they're sometimes I know they've got family members at home, like screen screen grabbing it and sending it them, and so they can see their their ride back straight away. Yeah, a lot of. Uh... A lot of times on track walk last year, someone would sort of have a meeting up on their phone on BSN showing us like uh, sort of the lines and the, what other people were doing, how certain riders on their team were riding, where they were riding. So, uh, yeah, it is helpful. And obviously it's nice to have your races filmed as well. Obviously, uh, I'm not sure if refs are allowed to use the replays or not yet. Um, but I definitely think they should be because... Um, uh, obviously, it's a lot clearer on on BSN sometimes than it is from the box. Yeah, they can now use it. Um, certainly, BSN and Eurosport coverage, uh, the referees are allowed to to do it. And sometimes referees have got out of the box and walked over to you know the BSN van or or to the the interview point uh, or, or wherever to have a look at it that way as well. So um, it has been used definitely in the past. It does help help them to make decisions, I think, and uh, helps them to make the right one. Just, Obviously, in recent years, we've seen a lot of wrong calls and, and stuff. Yeah, indeed. Well, um, thanks a lot for chatting to us, Dan. Hopefully, you're not going to be involved in any uh, any dubious calls uh, and stay out of that trouble. But I uh, look forward to seeing you in action again very soon. And your next fixture, of course, will be on Thursday for Ipswich at home at Foxhall in that second leg of the Knockout Cup tie as uh, Ipswich look to uh, continue their defence of the Knockout Cup from 2023. Thanks for joining us, Dan Thompson. Yep, thank you.
Dan Thompson. Now, one of the sides that Danny's going to be facing very soon are the Pool Pirates. We will hear from Zach Cook of the Pirates after they opened up their accounts in the BSN series with a walloping of the Oxford Cheaters. So we'll talk to Zach about that. We'll also hear from Louis Kerr of the Berwick Bandits and another episode of Mike Meets. Mike Boswell has been chatting to some of the stars of Speedway and as Kings Lynn are in action very soon and looking to get their first home meeting out of the way on Thursday, we'll hear from Benjamin Basso and see how he handles uh, Mike's probing questions. And uh, that'll be on the way in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. So in this part, we'll have a little bit of a look at one or two teams getting underway in the championship, the Cab Direct Championship and the BSN Series underway, and particularly so as we head through April. And the reigning champions of the BSN Series, the Pool Pirates, started in spectacular fashion at home against the Oxford Cheaters at Wimborne Road on Good Friday. The Dorset side roared to a 61-29 win in the BSN Series to set down a marker for the campaign. Even Neil Middleditch says... Even he was shocked by the impressive start for the Pirates in this new season. Well, let's hear from one of those pool Pirates. Uh, Well, there's two Cooks in the team. Ben Cook, of course, is the captain. His brother, Zach Cook, also firmly involved. And he's been speaking to Ryan Guest. Well, Zach, obviously, the the start of a new season, no one knows what's going to quite happen. Uh, People tipping both Pool and Oxford uh, to be well in the running again. Did you see that result coming on, on Good Friday? No, nah, definitely not Not by that much anyway. I think um, it's probably a mixture of all of our guys having a good night and, um, yeah, a few of the Oxford boys not having the best of nights. And, you know, it's early in the seasons and a lot of things are going to change during the season. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a good start for us. Like you say, there's plenty and plenty of positives that, that the Pirates can take away from that one. But at the same time, how important is it that you don't read too much into it and don't get too carried away? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's what I mean. Um, yeah, nothing's won in the first meeting over the season. But, um, yeah, it's a good stepping stone and, yeah, something to build off. And we know what most of the boys are capable of in our team now. And, um, yeah, as I said, there's three of them, oh, two of them that have never raced the um, bull track and yeah only done the practice on it and yeah they went out and had a good night so yeah it's definitely something to work on for yeah later in the season 11 paid 12 for yourself as well so a, a really pleasing way to get your season underway down there yeah exactly um, yeah it's always good to start off with a good meeting and yeah I don't think we haven't got a home meeting for a couple of weeks now or a week and a bit so um, yeah just hopefully keep working on that Obviously, it's well known how uh, the championship team building had to change this year. Uh, Richard Lawson, kind of the, the elder statesman of the team, and it's a, a much younger pirate side, but one with plenty of potential still. Yeah, exactly. Um, every team's sort of built different, and, yeah, I think we've got a solid team, like one through five, and, um, yeah, Rich, he's sort of leading the way, and, yeah, he's a solid number one, and, yeah, if we can all sort of do our part and he does his, then, yeah, it's, we're in for some good meetings. And obviously you, you felt that, that heartache down there last year, obviously with, with what happened in the, the competitions right at the end of the season. So for, for those of you who are returning to Wimborne Road, how much does that, does that drive you on even further? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've tasted success there and then obviously a bit of defeat there last year. And um, yeah, we worked hard all year last year and sort of just fell apart and when it mattered. And yeah, no, we definitely want to um, yeah, fix that up and hopefully get the win this year. And yeah, I think everyone's feeling the same way. Zach Cook of the Pool Pirates. Meanwhile, the Berwick Bandits clinched the Border Trophy with a 47-43 win at Workington to go alongside their 22-point first leg victory. The Bandits were successful in a last heat decider in what proved to be a far closer contest at Northside, with Comets newcomers Antti Vulas and Tate Zischke both impressing. Vulas scoring 11 for the home side, including three race wins, but the Bandits' top two of Rory Schlein, who got 11 plus one, and Louis Kerr, also on 11, were both in form. Kerr taking the flag in the decisive Heat 15 on the day. Let's hear from the man himself, Louis Kerr, with Ryan Guest. Well, Louis, obviously it's been a busy weekend with the, with the Berwick Bandits and a good start to the campaign as well. Yeah, it was good to get um, yeah, the Borders Trophy. Bit, bit of silverware to start the season, so that was nice. Um, I had, personally had a good one yesterday, so it feels good going into tonight. Yeah, and like you say, it was a good one for yourself. I know you were a bit frustrated with the home meeting, but to round off the way you did in the second leg at Workington, that that take, can take you into the rest of the season with them. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, I 
just couldn't make starts Saturday night and um, so uh, we'll try to put that right next week but yeah good second leg and full of confidence for yourself as well obviously it's a, a new experience up at Shieldfield Park as well um, and something that, that excited you over the winter to be linking up with the Bandits yeah so obviously you know a lot of familiar faces through the Oxford uh, link and um, I know a lot of people from my old Newcastle days as well so it's uh, it's a nice feel to have uh, starting a new club so um, yeah I'm enjoying it so far and I know Workington have got a, a fair few newcomers to, to British Speedway in the team as well but nevertheless particularly in that home leg um, some encouraging signs from, from other members of the team as well yeah massively you know the reserves done a fantastic job so that, that was nice to see and um, I think we've got a real good exciting team this year um, so hopefully we can get some more trophies yeah and people will have made you aware up there as well obviously Berwick have come close a couple of occasions but it's been a long time since they tasted any real success mm-hmm. obviously with the, the signings they've made the addition of Stuart Dixon as, as team manager as well do you think there's the, the right blend up there this year for to push on for honours I do mate I'd like to think so um, about a good start you know it's a good feel about the club and you know we've got a trophy now and we want more so um, yeah, it'd be nice He's got a taste for success. Louis Kerr of the Berwick Bandits after they won the Border Trophy. The real business begins for them this weekend when Berwick face Glasgow at 7 o'clock in the BSN Series, that one. Uh, and we also had Zach Cook on earlier, didn't we? They are back in that uh, BSN Series action with the return leg of that uh, big walloping of Oxford. Oxford looking to repay the favour. They've got a bit of a tough task. It's 29-61 at half-time. Oxford versus Poole on Wednesday evening, 7.30 at Oxford Stadium. I'll run through all of the fixtures uh, in full before the end of the podcast. So one final thing to bring you, and uh, that is our chat that, um, well, set tongues wagging last week as uh, Mike Boswell, who's uh, our uh, reporter uh, around the uh, the Ipswich parts, um, he, he caught up with a number of Speedway's top stars at the British Speedway Premiership Media Day. And uh, well, he lured them over. I'm not sure how he lured them, but he lured them to his, to his desk and uh, asked them all sorts of questions. Last week, he was chatting gangster rap with Jack Holder. Uh, what will happen in this week's episode as Mike meets Benjamin Basso? Name? Uh, Benjamin Basso. Uh, occupation? Speedway. First time on a Speedway bike? Seven years old. Uh, where? In Orlando, Denmark. Uh, people who have helped you with your Speedway career so far? Eric Gunderson, mom and dad. Uh, all the mechanics I've had um, my family basically yeah best things about Speedway uh, speed adrenaline and winning and imagine you're going to an interview and they, they do the classic question of how would others describe you how would your friends describe you uh, they would probably describe me as a funny guy pretty much never serious except for when it comes to Speedway and business <laughs> Fair enough. Good, yep. quali- good qualities. Uh, and uh, obviously, lots of youth um, has always come out of Denmark. Want to watch for the future that you may be helping or have got some eyes on? You all know the legend Brian Anderson. Mm-hmm. His son is racing right now. And um, as far as I can see, he, he will make it fun the game. And you're a man I see sometimes with your iPods stuck in your ears, just chilling out. Yep. What's your music taste? Um. That's a good question because I basically have none. I like old music, I love hip-hop, rap, whatever it is, as long as it sounds good. <laughs> and as a man who could probably get gold status on an air- airline, middle, aisle or window seat? Always window because then you can lean against something when you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and can you sleep? On fl- I can sleep. I've learned it. I remember the first season I had like a really hard time sleeping on planes mm-hmm. because I never tried it before, but... Once you get tired enough, you know, <laughs> eventually you fall asleep. So when you hang up your leathers and your, your speedway career, what do, you, what do you think your career is going to be post-speedway? Have you got- My dream is to look, at, look, back, look back at a good career. Um, I want to get into the GPs, you know, and most importantly, I want, I want to have like, enjoyed myself through the whole journey and met some people, had a good time, basically. Awesome. Yeah. What an outlook. Last film you watched? Uh, Dumb and Dumber. Good film. 
good film. Yep. Uh, very funny film. <laughs> Last uh, and favourite tracks. This is Speedway tracks, not music tracks. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, I think I'm in the right place this season as King's Lynn is actually my favourite track. Uh, it was Glasgow in the championship, um, as I'm not doing anymore, so now it's King's Lynn. And just one final question. When you finally get home, what do you do to switch off, wind down and relax? I like to chill with my friends. Um, not a lot of my friends are actually into Speedway, um, so it's actually nice to, to be able to get away and just talk about anything, play some tennis, do whatever. Um, yeah, I like to do sports when I'm not busy with Speedway, so a lot of sports, hanging out with the friends. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Ben Basso. All right, cheers. <laughs> Well, another successful episode of Mike Meets, I'm sure you'll agree, and uh, a little insight there into the world of Benjamin Basso. And Ben Basso will be in action for the Kingsland Stars in their first home meeting of the season in the Rowe Motor Oil Premiership as they clash with the Birmingham Brummies, 7.30 this Thursday. Looking ahead to the rest of the fixtures, well, Wednesday, first of all, BSN Series, it's uh, Oxford versus Poole, and um, Poole holding uh, quite a big advantage in that one. They're at 61-29 up at half time. Back to Thursday then. It's uh, back to uh, Premiership Knockout Cup quarter final action. Ipswich up against Leicester. They've got a slender lead there of just the six points. Sheffield have a... Uh, uh, a bit of uh, distance to make up over Bellevue. It's 49-41 at the halfway point in that one in Sheffield's first home fixture at Ollerton of 2024. Then on Friday, it's a big day in Scotland. The two big rivals meet in their respective season openers. Edinburgh Monarchs against the Glasgow Tigers in the VSN series at Armadale, 7.30 start time. The Scunthorpe Scorpions host the Red Car Bears in the northern section of the BSN series as well. Again, 7.30 the start time. And that fixture will be live on BSN. On Saturday, BSN series continues at Shieldfield Park as the Berwick Bandits host Glasgow Tigers at 7pm. And at Workington, the GT Tyres Arena at Northside, Workington Comets against the Scunthorpe Scorpions, 3pm the start time Saturday afternoon. And again, a fixture you can watch on BSN. Sunday, we've got National League action. The World Speedway Riders Association National Development League, Leicester Lion Cubs up against uh, Edinburgh, and that's at 3 p.m. at uh, Beaumont Park at the Pidcock Motorcycles Arena. Then on Monday, of course, Monday is Premiership Day, Row Motor Oil Premiership, Bellevue Aces versus the Leicester Lions, 7.30 start time there. Again, that one is uh, live on BSN as well. And then looking ahead to Wednesday next week, Another fix, fixtures on BSN. We've got a busy week ahead. A lot of miles to go. Uh, Pool Pirates versus Plymouth Gladiators at 7.30. And that's how things look for the next week or so. We'll worry about what happens after that in next week's episode of the podcast, which you're able to uh, get on all podcast apps, good and bad ones, and, of course, get it on YouTube as well uh, next week. It'll be out uh, probably Wednesday morning, first thing in the early hours is uh, usually how we do it. Make sure you like and subscribe or whatever app you use so you don't miss it. And we'll be back with that next week. In the meantime, enjoy your speedway, and we'll catch you on next week's episode of No Breaks, No Fear. Take care. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Sports Social Podcast Network.